You are now watching Zach Lesage PTCG. Let's get it. Yo, what's poppin' YouTube? Welcome back to Zach Lesage PTCG. I'm Zach Lesage. Word. Today we are going to be covering over a deck that is the peanut butter and the jelly. Dragapult and Shifu coming together all at once. I think this deck is incredibly hot. Um, I'm not going to lie. I saw this deck first on my homeboy Little Dark Fury's channel. You should totally check it out. Um, and I mean, I think he's been playing it in some of these online events. Saw it, I was like, okay, you want to know what? Let's add some Zach Lesage magic to the deck. Make this deck, mwah, chef's kiss, awesome, and see what's good. The list is in the description below. You can copy and paste that right into PTCGO. If you're missing any of the cards for this deck, or if you want those clout, 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 clout hype, uh, Urshifu VMAX Arts. The ones, you know, with all the Pokemon, the ones that are worth 40 packs, head to ptcgostore.com, plug in code ZLASSAGE5 to save 5% on your next order of codes. That being said, if you haven't hit it already, hit that subscribe button. This deck is currently going to be one of the best decks for the Battle Styles format, so check out all those and all the great videos going on in this channel. I don't want to blabble on too much. Let's see exactly what's going on in this deck list, and away we go. All right, jumping into this exciting list, this is a list that a lot of people probably want to see and I'll do my best to provide the best list for you. So you're like, yo Zach, this deck seems like an absolute pile. And I mean, sure, it certainly looks like a deck that um, someone would bring the league on their first day if they had some clout cards um, and did not know how to build deck building. I promise you, it's much better than that. So Dragapult VMAX kind of is coming back since Eternatus kicked its butt out of the format, since Urshifu is now kicking Etern's butt out of the format. See, payback, is, pay, payback always sucks, right? So this deck um, focuses on using a combination of Dragapult VMAX so you could spread damage and have a Psychic type attacker so that you have a strong matchup against Mewtwo Mew decks, you have a strong matchup against Pokemon with small HPs like Mad Party, um, there's also the very popular Urshifu deck in single strike and rapid strike form, and I mean, of course, there's probably a few more psychic type weak Pokemon that are going to be popular in our format. So Max Phantom, 130, five damage wherever you want. It allows you to set things up. But what that allows you to do is set up damage with G-Max Rapid Flow, Gale Thrust to take Oko's, while having a fighting and psychic type deck dynamic. That makes the energy lineup a little screwed up with four Aurora, four Horror Psychic Energies, and four Rapid Strike Energies. But you want to know what? It seems to be working so far for this deck. How else can we make this um, kind of confusing for your opponent? Well, if you want a Pokemon to switch into for Gale Thrust, you can have Jirachi. Um, you can switch into Jirachi, use Dreamy Revelation, grab a card. That means that this deck doesn't need to worry about playing Scoop Up Nets or anything like that. This is just probably the best pivot Pokemon we have available in formats. I could see either the new Manaphy or the new uh, Celebi being okay in this deck. I actually don't hate those cards, but right now I have Jirachi. Um, one copy seems fine. We don't necessarily want to start it. It's more of a mid-game card. Um, we do have copies of Power Plant in this deck because none of our Pokemon have abilities. The only Pokemon that it would stop would be the Dene GX, but the idea is to use the Dene GX first. Um, it's one of those things where Power Plant is a tricky card to play, but it does stop a lot of random stuff while your opponent gives you extra time to spread figure things out, whatever. You could always use Crobat over a power plant. You could always use Eldegoss while you have a power plant out, etc., etc. We also have a new copy of Fan of Waves. Um, just to add an extra layer in the deck, maybe slowing down our opponent by a turn if necessary, or slowing down something like a Dragapult deck if we run into one. So, I mean, I think the Fan of Waves is a little bit cute. Maybe it's a little extra, I'm not sure. And a couple of reset stamps. Beyond that, the only really new things that we're playing here are Escape Rope. Um, Escape Rope really allows us to bounce in and out of plays, set up plays for Max Phantom, and both Gale Thrust and G Max Rapid Flow. So I really like the dynamic of Escape Rope and Switch. I wouldn't even be surprised if it switched to like a 3 3 going forward. But beyond that, it seems like a pretty standard and self sufficient deck. Um, this deck boasts a pretty strong arsenal of matchups. Like I said, anything that's psychic or fighting type weak would definitely be strong. Like if you run into a Pikarom deck, you're probably having a very good time. If you run into an E-turn deck, you're probably having a very good time. Um, so these are important matchups to be doing well. Um, the factor is going to be consistency with this deck. This deck doesn't really have a lot like building up momentum throughout the game, but it does make up for that with strong spreading potential with Max Phantom and G-Max Rapid Flow. This is absolutely one of the best decks that we have in our current format, so I highly advise you to check this deck out. It's totally worth it. Um, you don't necessarily have to pick up the Clout Arts of the Urshifu VMAX, or if you picked up the promo versions of the Dragapult VMAX, that's totally okay in my book. Um, 
but it's, it's really cool. Oh, and one last thing, one last thing. I do play one copy of the Rapid Strike Urshifu, so anyone who's playing a Rapid Strike deck, I think you should play this. When I first saw Ra uh, the Rapid Strike Urshifu V, I thought both of these cards were the exact same cards. Obviously not the art, but if you look at the arts here, um, for this one and for this one, I thought they were literally the same attacks, didn't read it. I found that they were different. A lot of games are settled by one damage counter. Spiral Kick does one more damage than Strafe. It gives you an opportunity to hit something for 40 or more due to weakness. That also means that you have a different attack as well for the second attack, doing 90, 20, 20. So if you're trying to build up for a Rapid Strike Urshifu V max and you don't necessarily get it, you could use Sonic Legs to set up damage counters to win the game. So it does give you an opportunity, an additional win condition. I think it's totally worthwhile in any of the decks, um, whether it's Rapid Strike or Single Strike, to play one of the promo ones in each, at least at this current time in the metagame. It's totally my little hidden gem, little secret sauce, if you wanna say. But yeah, this deck's busted. Let's give it a try um, and see what kind of decks we can hit up. So I called on some of my friends to win, or to play some games, and I'm starting off with my buddy Gabe Shumway. Great player, um, great testing partner, great teammate. Um, I won the coin flip, would I like to go first? This is definitely a deck that I wanna go first with because it's an evolution deck and I wanna get first turn attachment. Starting with the Jirachi is kinda hot here. Um, hopefully we're able to get a basic Pokemon that we can put down and we'll see exactly what Gabe decided to play for this video. Um, so we did get a Rapid Strike Energy. What will I be able to get with Jirachi? Hopefully Dreamy Revelation comes in clutch. We're gonna go for Dragapult here. I think the Dragapult's gonna come in clutch. We know that we're gonna be drawing into Fan of Waves next turn. Let's go like this. I think at this point, I'm probably fine to pitch away. I'm gonna say Marnie. I think I'm gonna pitch away Marnie. Or actually, you wonder what? I'm gonna pitch away the Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX. Um, not really much else that I want to do. I could go switch and go Crobat for three, but I don't really feel comfortable with that. I'm fine with the Jirachi and the active spots. So we're just going to vibe out with that. So, I mean, this deck's really cool. It uses a combination of both Rapid Strike and Dragapult. They don't really seem like they meet up. And I know I've said that probably a few times in this video already, but it is one of those things where um, they both spread with their... V Max or their G Max attack kind of so you can spread for the 50 with the Dragapult V Max, you can spread with G Max Rapid Flow and really place damage counters accordingly. Um, it's also a dual type deck, so if something's psychic type weak, some fire stuff. Oh, with the Vile Plume GX, this looks like it's going to be um, Mewtwo Welder. So the weakness is going to be absolutely hot here. Gonna try to aim for those knockouts. I gotta be careful for the Incineroar GX. Because one thing that this deck doesn't play is a Galarian Zigzagoon because it does not play a Scoop of Ned um, engine. So that could be something that I do want to add in the future. I'll have to check that out. Okay, so looks like we're going to be playing the Welder there. Let's see exactly what we could do. There's only three cards in the hands. So let's go ahead and we already know what our card is. Let's go Dreamy Revelation. I'm just going to go Air Balloon. Air Balloon is definitely going to save a lot of things that we could be doing with the stack. And I'm going to go ahead and go with Research here. I don't think there's anything else I really want to be doing. I don't want to be going through. I might want to discard something else. So yeah, let's just go ahead Research. Not a big deal. And unfortunately, we are unable to find an energy. This is really bad for us. Um, didn't get much going on here. So since we already used Dreamy Revelation, maybe I should have, I mean, Dreamy Revelation doesn't change anything after. I might have decided to get down like a another Pokemon or something like that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead here, retreat, and I'm gonna hit for 60 damage. Now this might be a mistake because the Reshazard can come down strong, but I'm not entirely sure what Gabe has available in his hands. So a little bit of a weak start but that's okay. So there's a single fire energy. Maybe that just means that we're gonna see a pass. I'm assuming that Gabe would only put a fire energy down in the case where he does not have a supporter, does not have a Dedenne GX, because he does have access. Yeah, he's just gonna go ahead and pass here. So we know his hand's not gonna be particularly good. Let's go ahead here and go switch right into the Jirachi and see what we get off Dreamy Revelation here. 
So we did get a quick ball, and the quick ball can come in clutch. Let's go ahead and go quick ball right here. Onto... I'm probably going to get rid of reset stamp. I really don't see a reason to play it. I do want to just go for an Urshifu V. So let's go Urshifu V like this. Put this down. Attach there. And I'm probably just going to go for a strafe strategy. So let's go. <laughs> yeah, didn't want to stamp. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and send up the Jirachi back. <clears throat> so just getting some damage, getting our dual kind of strategy set up. And we'll have to see exactly where Gabe wants to go here. I mean, he might just be building up a big attacker, I think, with a single energy attachment. I, I'm assuming we're probably going to see a pass coming from Gabe's side of the board. So we'll have to see exactly. Is he going to go switch in here? I don't know if he's going to go ahead and switch because we can hit for a decent bit of damage. I think he's deciding if he's going to like play a switch or just pass or not. I think that's the only thing. Is it worthwhile for the one prize card? And yeah, there's the switch. We're, we're going to have to see what this means for us. That is the GX attack gone, so we don't need to worry about another double blaze for the rest of the game. At this point, I'm fine setting up the Dragapult because we do get an Urshifu Rapid Strike VMAX. We can attack with Gale Thrust for a decent bit of damage. So let's go for Dragapult here. We did get a Quick Ball, so this is going to be huge. Let's go ahead here and just go Quick Ball, discarding um, Boss's Orders. I mean, I'm completely fine with that. And we're going to go ahead here and pitch into a Dedenne GX. We don't need to really worry about too much else going on here. So let's go to Dene GX, pitch this hand, see what we can get. So did not get a lot of great stuff. We can go for Pokemon communication there. So we can get out a rapid strike VMAX. And I am going to go ahead and play a research. So pitching a lot of cards from my hand, but this deck can go through a lot of resources. I'm probably just going to go for the Horror Psychic Energy because we will have access to the G-Max Rapid Flow next turn. Let's go ahead and go Max Phantom here. I don't know if I want to if I want to take any prize cards on these Pokemon. Maybe I do. I think I think that might make more sense. Let's go one, one, two, three, four like that so that's going to be our first two prize cards and i mean we are pretty close to winning this game next turn there's our prize cards so if you see if they hit into the dragapult for any kind of damage that puts them at 200 and or puts them at 150 150 plus the 120 from g max rapid flow can definitely uh win a game so we are a single boss orders away from winning this game um, or an eldegoss from winning this game We'll have to see exactly how it goes, but we're, we're fairly close here. The biggest thing that would be difficult to get past is if Gabe's able to draw a prize card this turn. So a, a Mewtwo and Mew GX knocking out this Pokemon or knocking out a Dedenne, the Ndidi damage is going to matter a lot. Um, so that means I might have to go into a Gale Thrust But we'll have to see exactly what makes the most sense. So that's why the horror psychic energies are so popular and so um, so viable in a deck like this. This game's actually getting incredibly close due to both of our poor starts. Um, but that's what's going to happen when you're playing like a deck with all these different attackers. Or when you're playing a deck that has two VMAX Pokemon that are kind of sandwiched together. So it's really a difficult choice there. Let's see exactly what Gabe grabs with this quick ball. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a Mewtwo and Mew GX, which is kind of getting set up in the process. We really want to see some psychic type weak Pokemon. And we're going to see a Welder onto the Ndidi. Okay. So the Ndidi can definitely get a knockout on our Pokemon. That can be something difficult. Are we going to see a Flare Strike? He already used his supporter for the turn. I don't think he plays Great Catcher. So I think we're just going to get hit for 230 damage. 
Um, so I'm just going to go ahead here. I don't want to attach an extra energy because I think I'm going just to attack with the Indeedee um, in general. I think, I think I'm going to attack against, uh, or sorry, I'm going to attack with the Rapid Strike Urshifu. So I don't know if there's anything worthwhile um, to really change about what's going on with this hand. I don't want to attach an extra energy because that means it would be 10, 60, um, so 60, 80, or 60, 120, 180, 190, 380. But right now, it's only doing um, 130, 260 damage. So I think it's much better for me to go retreat into this Pokemon. And then I think I'm just going to get set up here with the Gale Thrust. So we move from the bench to the active, and we should be pretty good here just to get the knockout for 150 damage. So pretty well set up and maybe we can find the boss's orders next turn. Right now, we currently have access to um, a Pokemon communication into an Eldegoss that we have in our deck for a boss's orders that we could use to go G-Max Rapid Flow for a knockout on the Dedenne GX. We need to hope that Gabe does not get a reset stamp this turn because our deck can in get entirely thrown out. That might be difficult. I could have also played down a Power Plant. I think Power Plant could have been a much better play for me to play down more and more than I think about it. Um, I always get worried about just like a late game to Dene, but I forgot that the build of this deck does not include many to Dene for that reason. So that's an honest misplay on my behalf. Sorry about that, everyone. Sometimes when you're focusing in on a game to create content, you're not necessarily always playing at your 100% best. It's more about uh, trying to make sure that the deck strategy actually works here. So we might see the knockout just happen. Um, it might be like something like a, a boss order on the Dragapults could get a knockout. Um, and then Gabe might just assume that we don't have a, a, well, or a Lysander here. So in this case, it doesn't look like Gabe's using any kind of abilities to kind of jump through and see what exactly what's going on. Um, I don't think there's access to another Dedenne. So yeah, I think we should be okay here to just win the game. We're going to go ahead here and send up the Rapid Strike Urshifu. And let's go ahead here and go Pokemon Communication. We could put one of these Pokemon away in the deck. I think that's probably fine. Uh, it doesn't matter. There's Eldegoss. We do have it. And let's go Eldegoss for a boss's orders. And we can just knock out any Pokemon that we want because G-Max Rapid Flow is going to be doing enough damage. So let's go ahead, attach this here, and go for G-Max Rapid Flow. We could have hit something else that had damage counters as well. So absolutely uh, a close game, but both of us having a poor start really allowed it to happen. I think this is normally a favorable matchup. Okay, so playing against my good buddy Matty Tate from Chill TCG. Check out his events every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, I'm going to be playing Dragafu. Not sure what he's playing yet. I said, shoot me over a deck that doesn't destroy mine. Would you like to go first? Yes, this is definitely a deck we want to go first with. All right, let's see what we can get going on here. So we started with a pretty rough start. Um, the Crobat V, but we do have Quick Ball into a Horror Psychic Energy, which can be quite strong. We'll have to see exactly what's going on here. Let's see what we can start off with. We can either get out a Urshifu or something else. Um, don't know what he's playing there. That's part that's really rough. I'm going to go Quick Ball here. I'm going to discard Boss's Orders. I think that's probably fine. And we'll see exactly what we can do with this start. Um, we do have Triple Drag of... We do have a decent bit. I'm going to go with Draga, Dragapult first. Because we do have the Horror Psychic Energy. We can attach that right on there. Just double checking through the prize cards, seeing what's available. Should be okay with this. So let's just go Dragapult goes there. There's an energy, and we're going to just go pass for that. So, I'm not sure what Maddie's playing here. Okay, so we do know what Maddie is playing. Maddie is playing a Victini. And the Victini V Max deck could be a Blaze Teeny, Mewtwo Teeny. 
something. So maybe we made the correct choice with Dragapult V. Looks like a little bit of a rough start on his behalf. Not really doing much after that. Let's go for the Dragapult V Max here. And this is how games can just start like crumbling really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and go Aurora Energy discarding this. And we're going to go Marnie. Um, maybe he drew something off the Welder. Maybe another Welder. Hopefully we're able to attack here. Did not get anything strong off of that. I am going to keep a Pokemon. Um, put this down. Keep a Pokemon in my hands. I drew absolutely um, nothing here. So I'm going to go Power Plant in place. Hopefully stopping at a Dene GX. We'll see if he could go for a straight pass here. Um, see if there's anything going on. See if that Marnie got him. Oh, he got another Welder. It doesn't seem like he's getting the double energies. Victini decks do run um, very few energies. Maybe he'll have a Crobat in the deck. See if he can draw anything to get out of this. I want to just start attacking with the Dragapult V Max. And I'm fine having it a Dene down. And he's just going to go switch and maybe start just doing some damage. Oh, he totally forgot about the power plant. Uh, that's kind of uh, hilarious. Hello. Um, so that's definitely why we play it. And like a, like like I said, the Pokemon communication is absolutely huge there. So let's go for a Pokecom on the Dragapult V. Let's see what we can grab here. We do have access to our other Crobat V. And one cool thing about this deck is that we could actually attack with Crobat V. So I am going to go like that, pitch this from my hand, see exactly, because that does get through the power plants. We're going to go ahead here, retreat into a Dragapult, and we're going to start doing damage. I'm going to focus on the Victini Pokemon. So let's go Max Phantom. And let's just uh, do the extra damage there. So we should be able to kind of... Start overcoming what's going on here. Maddie might be able to attack with energy burst, but he doesn't seem like he has a lot going on here. Uh, the Dedenne is probably a really big issue. And maybe we'll see if he can get something off the Jirachi, but not really much going on here. That's really that showcases the power of power plan in a deck like this. If you're just playing Pokemon mindlessly, and I mean, I think Maddie truly intended to draw cards with Dedenne GX. But that's what Power Plant gets people off guard. It's not a stadium that you always pay attention to while you're playing. So, Oh, there's a giant hearth. So we could totally bump the Power Plant and maybe use something now. I'm not sure what he's going to do. Um, maybe, like, if he grabs both energies from the Fire Crystal, he might not be... He can't use Spreading Flames. So maybe he's just sacrificing the Victini V. I don't know. I don't know if he's trying to go spreading flames to build up something else in play or what's going on here. Okay. I mean, it's kind of the same thing anyways. Still looks like he's dealing with a bit of a tough hand. So let's go ahead here. Start building up the single strike Urshifu V. I'm going to kind of vibe out on this Marnie. I don't think I necessarily need to worry about it too, too much. And I'm going to go for a Max Phantom here. So let's go Max Phantom. Hit some damage there. And I'm going to start focusing on some other Pokemon that I might be able to hit. Let's go after um, a, Dene, a Dedene. One, two, two, three. And then I'm going to start building up damage onto this Victini V. I think that seems pretty fair. So a decent bit of damage just being done there. We'll see what Maddie's able to do. Probably going to go for an Outrage play if I ever saw one. Okay, maybe it's just going to be Victini V hitting some damage here. And I think there's a certain point where you just struggle in a game a little bit. Um, so that's going to be me being able to get a knockout there. I don't think Maddie's going to necessarily be able to get a knockout in return. He's going to have to do a decent bit of damage. Let's go ahead here and I'm going to go ahead and quick ball discarding a horror psychic energy. Let's just get another Dragapult V start getting that built up. So we have options on our bench to kind of deal with whatever we want to deal with. We're going to go for a knockout here. And I want to make sure that this is in range for a G-Max. Uh, I think it's Rapid Strike or Rapid Flow. So that means I need to get this to 120 remaining. So let's do that. And considering there's some other things left over, let's hit... I don't know if it really matters. Let's just start powering up to hit the Jiraji, I guess. 
maybe we could draw some extra prize cards here or there. I'm not sure. I don't think the extra damage necessarily matters there too much. Um, and I don't want to place too much damage because there is the Outrage, Rush Ram, and Charizard. So, we'll have to see if Maddie's going to be able to get out of the active spots. Are we going to be able to kind of take the win next turn? I'm really looking at that Dedenne GX. He might just be like, okay, you want to know what? We only have the opportunity to attack with this uh, Dragapult VMAX. And... Looks like he's going to be just drawing a prize card there. So we do have win or two prize cards there. We do have win in hand. Um, the Victini deck can be inconsistent. It's very similar to Senta Scorch. So let's see exactly what we can do here. Um, depending on what we top deck. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go Eldegoss. So this deck played out very much like a Dragapult deck this game. But that's okay. We're just going to be able to kind of run through this game. Give Maddie the heart for playing the game. And yeah, we'll just hit like this in case. Whatever. We already won the game. It doesn't matter. There's no reason for the damage counters after you win the game. We got it. We take those. And there we have it, peeps. That's how the Dragapult Urshifu deck works. So sometimes you're going to be able to attack with Urshifu. Sometimes you're going to be attacking with Dragapult. But you really change it up depending on which one really comes out or which one really works for any particular situation. This deck might need a little bit of an overhaul because it does feel a little bit inconsistent. But similar to Sun of Scorch, that same, that same kind of inconsistency doesn't seem to mess with its win percentage overall. And I think it's extremely good. So give this deck a try. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Currently over 2k subs and on our way to the moon. Let's try to get there everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go play in the chill TCG event tonight and that's what I'm doing. So peace out. Have yourself a great one. I want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's become a channel member on Zach Lesage PTCG. Not only do these members watch my videos regularly, they also have contributed financially to me as a content creator, which makes my world a lot easier and financially stable. I don't expect anyone to offer any kind of support financially to me. I certainly appreciate every single person who watches my videos, but I do want to give an extra special shout out to those who have went above and beyond. And that list includes Ali Plays Pokemon, Xenon TCG, Smart TCG, Slavin Tizik, Joshua Sutherland, Justin C, The Home Junkie, Samuel Stapowski, Yoshi3483, Anonymous, and Jake R. I truly appreciate it and it means the absolute world to me. If you want to know what channel memberships is, you can get special perks by paying a certain set amount fee monthly. Um, and it's all within the channel membership. So on desktop, you can click join and then it will show you what their offerings are. It's based around each individual currency depending on which country you live in or reside in but there's options that include getting access to all of my deck lists youtube to discord integrations special group coaching on a monthly basis and more i really appreciate everyone for supporting my content thank you so much thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel if you haven't already it mean the world to me if you could subscribe to help support me as a content creator thanks again and have yourself a great one